Good evening everyone, this is Bremster and today I'm coming to you with the next puzzle in this set of the Sudoku U series. This puzzle is called Running Man by Scaly Griffin and Nash. Um, the Sudoku U series of course is the series of puzzles from the Puzzles and Paradoxes class being run by Full Deck and Missing a Few Cards. And all of these puzzles that have been created from um, these students, or a lot of the puzzles created by these students, have been put together into a book um, which is available for free as a PDF, there'll be a link below and I'll try and remember to throw one above as well, um, called Signet Sudoku Volume 1. Um, and you can go and grab that book and experience all of the puzzles. I've got, of course, I am bringing you one right now. Man, I need a drink. Um, so um, you can go get Signet Sudoku if you want a physical copy of it. The link below in the description is where, of course, where you'll be able to get one of those as well, because they've put it together as a class book for people to have, um, which I think is absolutely phenomenal. Um, but yeah, the Puzzles and Paradoxes class, I'm really glad that we are teaching sort of logic thinking to people, because problem solving is an important part of many jobs, um, particularly professional jobs. And I don't think it's taught well enough in many places. Um, it's definitely something I use every day in my job. So, yeah, Running Man by Scaly Griffin and Nash, who I believe are two of the students in the classes. So, um, let's have a look at the puzzle. So, we've got normal Sudoku rules apply. So, in every box, in every row, and in every column, we need to place the digits 1 through 9 without repetition. Um... Um, cells separated by a black dot are in a 1 to 2 ratio. Cells separated by a white dot um, must be consecutive. 1 to 2 ratio just means one is double the other. Not all dots are necessarily given. And digits placed on an arrow sum to the digit that is placed in that arrow circle. So the sum of those three digits will go there. The sum of those three digits will go there. Um, now, one um, thing I should call out about Signet Sudoku is it's broken into difficulties all the way from incredibly introductory puzzles, things that um, people who are very new to Sudoku will, it will teach them some incredibly basic things, um, and all the way up to medium difficulty puzzle for experienced solvers, but um, there's also some quite tricky puzzles at the end. But if you're new to Sudoku, Signet Sudoku is probably a phenomenal book for you to start with because you will be able to um, get some incredible basic fundamental things. Some of the puzzles early on I was able to test in only a couple of minutes. Um, but as you develop, you work through and, and they get harder and harder. Um, these are puzzles that are going to, I hope, what, uh, what I expect would happen is some of the puzzles from the earlier classes will be used as examples in later classes. And I expect they'll just be able to iterate and work off what's come before. And I think that's just wonderful. I'm going to restart this puzzle to restart my timer. Let's give this a shot. So there's a few things I know. The crop key stuff is incredibly powerful, but I'm going to start with a basic arrow concept, which is the minimum digits you can put on an arrow, three cell or three cell length arrow where all the digits see each other, um, are one, two, and three. If you add one, two, and three, you get six. So the minimum I could put into this arrowhead, this arrowhead, this arrowhead, and this arrowhead would be six. So, but the maximum I can put into a single cell is nine. So these are all six, seven, eight, or nine. But there's a couple of important things to note. First of all, let's talk about the nature of black crop key dots. One side of a black crop key dot is going to be low. The other side is going to be even because of the doubling. One will double to two, two will double to four, three will double to six, four will double to eight. The next set is five doubling to 10, which doesn't work within the rules of Sudoku. So I'm always going to work with those four pairs, but you'll notice three and six. Six can only pair with three because six doubled goes to 12 and three only pairs with six because three halved is one and a half. So when you've got a run of three digits like this that see each other, these have to be from one, two, four, one, two, four, and eight. But I can never put eight onto a three cell um, arrow line because even if I was to put uh, it, first of all, because of the nature, if I put eight in one of them, four would go into the next. The sum of that is 12 and I've already blown the total. So none of these are eight. This is one, two, four. Two goes in the middle um, because of one has to be connected to the two. Wherever I put, if I put one in the middle, both of those are two and it doesn't work because they all see each other. So this is going to be one, two, four, which means this is a seven, which takes seven out of both of those. Now, this now can't have a two or a four on it. So it can't be one, two, it can't be two, four, and it can't be four, eight. So this is three, six. Now, if this is six, one, two, this could be a nine. If this is a three, 
this could be 312. Hmm, not so sure about that yet. But this is a run of three consecutive digits. So, right, what could they be? I can't include a one, a two, a three, a four. If I put a five on this, I couldn't use a four or a six. So there's no consecutive. So these are seven, eight, and nine. This is the five. The five is consecutive with the six, which means this is the one, two, three, because that's the only way to make up a six. I can take six out of both of those, but the seven, eight, nine, I know the order of because the eight must go in the middle. This becomes the eight. This becomes the seven, nine pair, because whichever way I do it, seven, eight, nine, or seven, eight, nine, the eight goes in the middle. And this seven tells me that's the nine and that's the seven. The eight is, I can't double eight, so I have to halve it. So this is, I double four four to get to eight. So that's the four that is putting four up here somewhere, but I'm not sure it's forced onto that yet. Um, now, 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 these are one, two, three. This can't be one, two, or three. So it's four, six, or eight, because it has to be from one, two, three, four, six, eight. So this is four, six, or eight. Not sure yet. And why is my wrist buzzing? Um, now, what? So, oh, it's much more obvious than that. This can't be a six. I could have taken digits out of here anyway, because as I said, one of the digits must be low and one of the digits must be even. So a high odd digit can never go onto a black dot. This is the eight. This is the nine. Eight dial comes down to four. And now what is on this arrow was restricted because the only way on an eight, first of all, you must use a one. Now, because, um, because if I don't use a one, the minimum digits are two, three, and four. Two, three, and four sum to nine. And this is an eight arrow. So there must be a one on it. Now, I've got a one and then I need two other digits that sum to seven. Now, I can't use one six because I've already used the one. Um, so I could use two five. I can't use three four because the four is already in the column. So this is one two five. And the two digits that are consecutive from that range are the one two, and this becomes a five. The two here makes this the one and this the two. That's very cool. Now this I, hmm. If this is four, this couldn't be two. So if this is four, because there's already a two in the row. If this is four, this is eight. If this is eight, this is, oh, this can't be eight. So if this is four, this can't be two or eight. So this is not four. This is six or eight, which means this is three or four. Two, two, two is up here somewhere. This is cool. Still not fully unlocking the the way this works. But I will. So this nine arrow, maybe? Six, one, two is still probably possible. If this is a three, this could be a two, four or a one. No, it couldn't be one, five. So this is either six with one, two. Which would mean this would have to be the two because I couldn't make this the one because if this was the one, this would be the two and then I couldn't have anything here. So if this is six, this is one, whoops, this is one and two. If this is three, now I, the, I'd need to get another six on the arrow. Now I can't use one five, so it would have to be two four. And I'd have to put the two there and the four there. So they're the only possibilities. Hmm. If this was six, one, two, this is four. If this is three, Two, four. Three, four, two. Why did I say three, four, two couldn't work? Three, four, two. Oh, because I can't put four there. Three, two, four. This couldn't be two. This would have to be eight. This is four or eight.
7 is over here. Can I put 7 on this arrow? No, because this would have to be 8 or 9. So if this, if I put 7 on this arrow, so by Sudoku, 7 is in one of those three. If I put 7 on this arrow, this would have to be higher than 7, and it can't be 8 or 9. So 7 is not on this arrow. This is the 7. This has to be consecutive with 7, so it's 6 or 8. And this being 6 or 8 means if this is an 8, this is a 4, and if this is a 6, this is a 3. That's very, very weird. Now this isn't seven, eight or nine. This now has a maximum of six, but it's a minimum of three, three, four, five, six. This can't be a three because this would be one, two and I can't put one or two in that cell. If it's four, it's one, three and it would be one, three. Five would be, well, this, this has a minimum of three right here. This is, wait a minute, this has to be three because I can't use one, two, four, five. And if I put made this a six, this would have to be higher than six and it can't be seven, eight, nine. This is a three. So this can't be a six or it'd be three, three. So this is four or five and this is a one or a two. That's, this is very strange, but I seem to have used all the clues. So I'm missing something Sudoku related, except I haven't used that. Now, all I know about this is I have to put an odd and an even digit on it. I'm not sure what that's giving me yet. Five in this box is in one of those two, because it can't be in any of those cells. So five is in one of those two. These are six, seven, eight, nine. So this is six or eight. That's a six, eight pair because these are six, seven, eight, nine, and there's a seven, nine looking at it. So that is a six, eight pair. So what are these? One, two, three, or five. And there's a one, two, three looking down here. So this is a four, five. And now I've got a four, five pair, and these are one, two, three. There's no three there, and I've got a one, two pair in this box, and there must be a three here. This is a little weird. Am I missing something incredibly obvious? So this can't be one, two, or three. Eight is now down in one of those two. Nine is in one of those. So nine is in one of those two. Six. Five and six are down here. This isn't a four. There is a four on this dot. That four did that ages ago. But there is a four on that dot, but that's not giving me much. How do I... There's no one on that dot because it'd need to be one, two, and it can't be. There's no two. So three, four doesn't work. So there's no three on this dot. So there's no one, two, or three on this dot at all. But I knew there was no one, two, three there because of that looking down. That digit is in one of those. One and two are both up here because one, two, one, two. So one and two are both up here. Does that interact with this? Eight is in one of those two. Am 
Am I supposed to be chasing nines? That could that be a nine? If that's a nine, that's an eight, that's an eight. Puts eight in one of those two. I'm not seeing a problem there. Seven is in one of these two by Sudoku because I can't put it in any of those cells in the column. Where's five in this row? Five can't be in any of those because of the digits that have pencil marked. Five's not in there because of the four five pair. So that's a five, which means five is in one of those two. Does that do anything? It puts five in one of those two, in one of those two. So six is in one of these two now. And six, this is a six nine pair. So this is a one or a two. One, two, there's a three down here. There's a three in one of those two. So the, hang on, what, these are one, two, three, and eight. So that is just an eight, which puts eight in one of those. Can that be eight? This would be seven or nine. Oh, the eight makes that six, which makes that three. The six looks down, making that nine and that six. And these are four, five, and seven. So this is a four or a seven, and this is four, five, or seven. Now, if this is seven, this would couldn't be six, so it would be eight. Eight is in here. Five would mean this has to be six or four. Can't be six, so it would be four. And if this is four, this would be five or three, so it would be five. This is four, five, or eight. So this is either four, five, or seven, eight. And these are one, two, three. There's no three there. This is the three. Oh, there's no three there. Three is in one of those two. So three is in one of those two. This is a triple. One, two, three, four, five, Six, four, five, nine go into those. So this is just a nine because the four, five is looking down. This is a four, five pair. These are one, two, six. Am I going to end up coloring the ones and twos somehow? These are six, seven, and eight, and that's not a six. If this is a six, this went one, two, so that was a four, that was a seven, that's an eight, that's a six, that's a seven. That seems to work. I know three is in one of those two. Seven six three or seven eight four. This can't be one, two, three, four, five. It can be six, it can't be seven, six, eight, or nine. I'm very confused. Five is down here. This dot, is it? Hmm. If 
try to see if there's a relationship between any of this, but it's a long chain if it is. I mean, there's an immediate relationship here. Two makes that five. One makes that four. But... I mean, two, five, four, seven. Two, five, five, four. Four, four is up here. No. Have I missed something on this arrow? Six, one, two, four. Or three, two, four, eight. Seven. Seven is in one of those three and one of those three. Hang on, seven isn't here or here. Because seven, why can't seven be? Oh, because seven is in here for the column. So seven is in one of those two. That's not it. Sorry, I do need to check what's happening on my phone. Four in this row, it's in one of those three. Have I just missed some basic scanning here? If if this is two three four, that's a one. If this is six one two, hang on. If this is two three four, that's a one, and that can't be a one or a two. If this is two three four, it, hang on. So if this is six one two, that's a three, and that can't be a one or a two. If or if this is six one two, this can't be a one or a two. If this is two three four, that's a one, and that can't be a one or a two. This is a one two pair. So that's the three and that's the five. That one, two pair. Now that five looks down making that the four and that the five. That four means four is in here somewhere. Three and four are in those. There's no three there. This is, nine is in one of those two, because this is six, seven, eight, nine. So this is six, eight, or nine, which pairs up with that somehow, maybe? But nine now is up here, because nine isn't there, or, oh, where was nine in this box? That was nine, that was eight, that was four. These now have to sum to five, so this is three and two, which means this is the one. This is the two, this is the three, this is the six. That's been there for ages and I just missed it. So these are one and seven, which means this is the two, this is the one. The eight looks back making that the seven. So these are six, eight, and nine. So one, two, three, four, five, and seven go into those. So that's the four, which means that's the five, that's the seven. Seven means that's the eight. This is four, which is three plus one. It's making that two. 
I missed it. I missed that for so long. This one looks back, making that the two and that the one, taking one out of those. That's a two six pair, which takes two out of those. It was very cool. I just missed it for too long. The seven looks up making that the five and that the seven. This box is missing a two. This column, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, five and nine go in. This five makes that the nine and that the five. Taking five out of there, making that the five. Now, this two looks down, making that the six and that the two. Um... Where do I want to look next? This row, maybe? So, one, two, three, four, five, six, four, seven, eight, nine. Well, there's no eight there. There's no four there because of the one, two, four in the box. There's no seven, eight, or nine there. That's the four, taking four out of all of those. So, this is actually a three, four pair. So one, two, three, four, five, these are six, seven, eight, nine, must contain a six, which looks up taking six out of there. Seven must be in those for the column, so there's no seven there. Oh, I could have taken seven out because of that anyway. This is just a one for the box, so that's the four, that's the one. The four looks back making that the three and that the four. The four makes that the eight, which makes that the six, which looks up making that the eight, that the nine, that the six. The nine comes out all of all of those, remove the corner marks. That makes that the nine. These are six, seven, and eight. There's no eight or seven there. That's the six. This is a seven, eight pair. The nine looks back making that the seven, which looks back making that the eight and that the seven. These for the row, one, two, three, four, five, six, and eight go in. That eight makes that the six and that the eight. These are one, two, three, four, five, six, three, and nine. I'll use that nine to make that the three and that the nine. The three makes that the one and that the three. The one looks up making that the seven and that the one. And that is the correct solution to the puzzle. 24 minutes, 26 seconds. I definitely stumbled a little bit on the scanning for that one, but that was a lot of fun. I really love the way these arrows just forced some Sudoku. I missed some basic Sudoku. That that's fine, particularly up here. But that happens. And but the puzzle, the way the constraints interacted with each other is really, really cool. If this is the quality we're getting out of these students, it's just absolutely beautiful. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope you're enjoying the Sudoku U series. There's a couple more to come, including the lecturer's notes. And uh, yeah, then we'll resume some semi-normal stuff. There's a, a bit more coming for the channel. Thank you everyone for watching. And as always, good luck with your solving.